We've all heard about the fact that we're putting plastic all over the ocean. Today we're going to go a little bit deeper into that problem and also talk about microplastics and how they're affecting our own health. Today we're going to talk about what's happening in the oceans when it comes to plastic. Quite clearly we're seeing all kinds of shifts right now. We're all aware of it, the news is full of it, but what's the backstory? Well, in fact, we're starting to see all kinds of shifts in the ocean right now. One of the things we observe, of course, is what's floating, which is the 15%, which is on the ocean surface. Equal amount is probably floating somewhere in the average depth of the ocean being 4,000 meters. So it's quite a spread there. So the densities will be less than on the surface, but there's still a lot there. But the vast majority of what we have of ocean plastic is actually sinking to the bottom. And that, I think, is a huge problem. And we're just starting to scratch for solutions of how we're going to tackle it. Now, beyond the macroplastic, which is most of us are thinking on, on a daily basis, of course, there are many other aspects to it as well. And one of the most important ones is the direct microplastic. That's the one that comes from when we're using various types of products. And here we can see a number of pathways. Either it comes through the ocean, through wind, through wastewater, through road runoff, from streams, and then into the ocean. So basically, we're moving vast quantities of plastic straight into the ocean. Now, do we have any sense of who's uh, to blame here? Well, quite clearly, some of us uh, here, for example, in Europe, we use a fair amount of equivalent to plastic bags. Uh, North America uses even more. And East Asia is also climbing up as very large users, whereas some parts of the uh, world, like Africa, is actually using relatively small amounts per capita. Um, so what kind of mi primary microplastics are we dealing with? Well, the largest source is actually from our clothing. A lot of us have things that have plastic in it in our clothing, and the end result is actually uh, that we create a huge amount of plastic fiber going into the ocean. The other source of it is really looking at what's coming from our driving habits, from the tires. So most of us think of uh, tires being made out of rubber, but most of the tires we use today have half or so that's actually plastic. And that's being uh, worn off on a daily basis as soon as we use the car. So when you're using it in the right way, you end up putting plastic in the ocean. The third category is what we call city dust. This plastic dust is basically coming from cities and it can be all kinds of uses of our daily life. Beyond that, there are things like road paints, looking also at painting of um, boats that can have a very significant impact. And the very small ones are actually the 2% here coming from our health products, uh, scrubbers, for example, or toothpaste. And in several countries now, we've already outlawed the use of this. But in some places, we think we've dealt with the problem when we dealt with the 2%, but we have all the other types of uses that we still need to deal with. Now, looking across the world, we quite clearly have some parts of the world that are putting out more than others. So we can see in North America, primary microplastics is more than the larger macroplastic being emitted. In Europe, it's about 50-50. Looking to Asia, that's where the biggest amount of leakage is taking place, particularly of microplastic, but even micro is very large there. So this graph, I think, illustrates where the big investments are needed and who needs to deal with the problem. So what are the effects of this? Well, this is a schematic way of describing how plastics comes into various types of organisms. Increasingly, the small amounts of plastic actually get into the plankton, which is the main basis for feeding lots of things in the ocean, which means that ultimately plastic actually is pretty much everywhere at this point. Now, as we're starting to get better and better of analyzing, it turns out plastic is even making it into uh, our basic cells. Now, this is a schematic example of a cell, and it shows how nano-sized plastic actually goes through our membranes and into our bodies. So what are the actual effects of this? How is this going to affect me? Well, the sad news is we don't really know right now. We still haven't done the research. We are starting to look at how do we do the research in terms of pathways of plastic into our bodies. But the early research really is not very conclusive. So there's be quite a few years before we're at a stage of where we know what's going on and what we need to do. Now, to me, that's really scary. I think it is to most people who have children. 
What is their future going to look like? And how could our generation screw it up as badly as we have? So looking for the future, we really need to look at also the costs because this is now creating huge societal cost. Several countries are waking up to the fact and are really trying to invest in finding solutions to this. But there's still a lot more work to be done here. So my analysis is that the plastic problem will be with us for the next generation. And we better hurry up to find solutions that would really help how we go into the future. So it's a scary future, but together we can solve some of the problems.